find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter for the Indie Mayhem Show. Eamon, it's episode 75. Holy crap. My co-host Eamon joining me from Corpus Christi, Texas. Myself, I'm in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, how you doing, Eamon? Good. There's been a lot of episodes, Sorg. We, I can't believe that. Um, they, they keep creeping up on us, too. We got to do something special for the two-year coming up here. Uh, but anyways, don't, don't, I keep missing my anniversary for all the podcasts, so make sure you hold me to that. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> as we talk with uh, our weekly interview and kind of indie wrestling discussion series, taking it away from the other show where we're talking about John Cena and whatever crazy crap's happening on TV and uh, talking about something a little bit that we're involved, at least, you know, kind of transitionally here on the, on the side lines here with production and such and uh and and, and kind of hoping to get you guys into supporting indie wrestling and, and finding out what's going on with the people out there uh so please go check us out and the other shows that we're doing at wrestling mayhem uh you can find uh links and everything for the podcast feed video feed uh as well as social media at mayhem show on the twitter and all over on the facebooks and the in the, 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 the google plus and all kinds of stuff uh you can also drop us a line let us know who you think we should be talking to talking to or if you get a line of we're announcing who we're talking to this week and ask questions at 412-206-WMS0 for the hotline or the email address goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com and of course like i say you can join us here live live at wrestlingmayhemshow.com about 11 p.m eastern time you can do the math on the time zones so with us this week um somebody i've had the pleasure to see uh a few times over the last year actually uh here in the uh western pa area uh it's um, uh it's uh, Mary Elizabeth Monroe joining us tonight. How you doing? Hi, how are you? All right, all right. Thanks for joining us on the on the Indie Mayhem show. Uh, so uh, first of all, like I say, we, we we're kind of you know uh, kind of want to show the positive side, I guess, of indie uh, wrestling and showing everybody's really a fan, right? Uh, what was kind of your first exposure to well pro wrestling in general? Um, I really was not raised with wrestling um, for a couple of reasons. When I, I remember when I was really little, uh, sometimes it would be on TV, like before we would leave for church. Mm. And then that was when they had like the Sunday heat and it was on just regular TV. And it didn't take long before my mom saw that. And she said, we were not allowed to watch that anymore. Oh, and not long after that, it wasn't even available on anything other than cable. And I never had cable. So, um, I just, I was not exposed to it really at all. And then I was working, I was, um, when I was a, older, I was a waitress and I was also singing in a rock band and I invited the people I worked with to one of our shows. And one of the waiters said, I will come see your band if you get your band to come see me wrestle. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, that's, you know, whatever. It sounds interesting. So my guitarist, and my one of my close girlfriends and I all went to see this wrestling show, which happened to be Heartland Wrestling Association, um, which not long before that had been a developmental territory for the WWE. And this was 15 minutes from where I grew up my whole life, and I didn't even have any idea. I didn't know anything about it. So um, that was an interesting revelation to realize that that had been just right down the road from me. But that first show, I remember watching it and just, I I mean, before the show was over, I was telling my friends, I'm going to do this. And I think they didn't really take me that seriously. They were like, yeah, yeah, that would be cool. You know? And, um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I just don't know if they, they really realized that I, I had made that decision right there and um, it took me a few months, I would say, to um, be able to kind of get the information I needed to kind of find out who to talk to and where to go to get trained. And I finally was able to start training there and um, that was where, you know, I I first started training and and got to do my first wrestling matches. and then, you know, I, I never stopped. I just, 
I, I couldn't. I can't. I love it. So, <laughs> so that's interesting. So, what was it about? Like, was it was it something about the in person that you got to see an indie show versus just kind of catching it on TV? Obviously, it hadn't been a while since you've seen the TV part, of course. Um, like, was it that kind of in person thing? I don't know if it had anything to do with in person because you know, like I said, I didn't have any exposure to it. Mm -hmm. Um, It very well may have been part of it because my background is um, definitely athletics um, in particular softball. I've, I've played, I've coached, I've, um, you know, always been, been very active in softball and I've played a number of other sports, but I was also very involved in theater and I actually went to college for musical theater and also played softball in college. So those were like my two main things. And when I went to see this show, I I could see everything that I loved to do all just rolled into one. And um, in high school in particular, and as well as in college, I had had issues with the athletic director and the theater director, both wanting 100% of my time. And, you know, they weren't really willing to compromise, which was a really huge problem for me because I didn't want to choose between either of them. I loved both so much. So when I was able to see this independent wrestling show and I could see that there are these characters and they're being competitive and they're athletic um, and they're pushing themselves, but they're also interacting with the crowd, um, with a live audience, which is what I, I love about live theater. Um, it was just the first time I had found and seen something that appealed to everything that I loved and that I was good at and wanted to do where I wouldn't have to choose between them. Excellent. Excellent. We were showing a little bit of a, a match we found on YouTube here for the videos uh, people watching. Uh, you against uh, Rebel uh, uh, here. And, and, and I always uh, let's say, I saw you first at uh, VOW's first Queen of the Ring about a year ago, and of course this year's. And uh, I even uh, worked with you, um, you know, working cameras over at RWA uh, in the fall, I believe it was. And uh, mm-hmm. you're, you're definitely, um, you come out as a you come out as an unapologetically uh, positive person. It seems coming out to the <laughs> ring. <laughs> um, that definitely struck me. But but and as I was seeing a little bit in this footage, uh, uh, you get you get pretty serious in there too. Um, so like, what's kind of uh, how do you come across like who you are in the ring? I don't know if I understand. Uh, well, like, what, what's kind of your approach to like? How much of that is just kind of you in there turned up a bit? I mean, it is me. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not a manufactured character. Um, you know, anybody who knows me knows that I am positive and passionate, but I'm also extremely competitive, in particular with myself. And um, when I'm in the ring, that's that's when I go to work. Mm-hmm. And you know, I I'm not only competing with my opponent, but I'm competing with myself to do better than last time and to do you know the best I can and to push myself um, to, to be able to successfully complete, you know, maneuvers and things that, um, you know, one, one time I may have never thought I could do. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's me, it's all me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, I, it's like I, I I love interacting with the crowd. I I like interacting with my opponents and everybody involved. And uh, I mean that's even how I am when I play softball. You know, I'll interact with even the opponents, kind of you know joke and everything. But when it's time to go and when it's time for me to make an out or when it's time for me to hit the ball, I'm not playing around. Mm-hmm. So I mean it's that's me. You, you mentioned the interactivity with the with the with the fans. Um, you're definitely one of the, those persons. You know, on the video side, we love when somebody like kind of knows there's a camera there and plays to the camera and looks at it. Like I know you, well, you're blowing a kiss to the camera. You're blowing a kiss to the fans. Um, uh, the first night I saw you, uh, it re- you really stuck out because uh, for whatever reason, I think you were maybe second, third match in, and then the crowd was not really into it. That that I could tell, <laughs> and just you came out, and I I, I think. 
I, I think you weren't a good guy that night, if I recall correctly. And uh, But right away, you got the crowd yelling at you. You were interacting with them. You were blowing that kiss, and, and you got people. Um, can you speak a little bit about that and, and a little bit more? Um, because, I mean, it seems like, I don't want to say you were the only one that got that that night, um, but you were definitely one of them that, that, that really kind of made that flow a bit more. Um, I think that you are right that I'm not necessarily the only one that got that, but I'm the only one I would, I think it's safe to say that had to go out there and pull it out of the people Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. part of um, what was really interesting with that show and that match is that nobody there really knew who I was. Right. And not only did they not know who I was, but I got the feeling that a lot of people in that crowd held the opinion that if they hadn't heard of me, that I wasn't any good. So they had already formed an opinion that since I hadn't, you know, been on these big women's shows that they were familiar with, that they just, they weren't interested. So there, while there were other girls that were able to get that kind of reaction that I did, they, they didn't have to come out and work for it the way I did. They already had some familiarity. Um, so it was, it was a really interesting position for me. And it, it was kind of, <laughs> like I said, I'm very competitive. So I was totally like challenge accepted. You, you want to, you know, pretend like you know what I have to offer. And, you know, I knew that they were wrong. So, um, you know, I went out there and, and I kind of had that chip on my shoulder and I was like, all right, you know, you, you don't know who I am and you think that means something while well, I'm here to tell you otherwise. And um, by the end of that match, you know, as much as they hated me, they loved to hate me. And they really, I, I think they were saying, you know, please come back, you know, before before I was done. And they, you know, kind of, um, I think I made my point by the time the match was over and I'm pretty sure I lost the match too, but they, you know, they were still applauding me, um, as, as far as giving me that respect that they, they realized like, Oh, you know what? Okay. Mm-hmm. This, this girl actually knows what she's doing and, um, you know, can go. Certainly, certainly. Um, and of course, leading to, uh, again, I was, I was glad I was there to uh, check it out uh, uh, here this past year, uh, winning uh, Queen of the Ring with the Vicious Outcast Wrestling Group uh, down here, just, just a little bit south of Pittsburgh uh, in the area. Um, so uh, what was that like? You know, this is, I always thought it was interesting. That's why I went to that show last year, and I think that was just the second VOW show I had the opportunity to attend. Um, you know, that in that case, for the most part, being an all-women's show, you know, definitely a big women's showcase uh, for this last year's uh, tournament. Um, seemingly the only one really given a big 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 chance uh to women's wrestling in the area for the most part um but uh you know how important is it that that there is that kind of women's wrestling showcase like vow is doing Uh, i think it's important in a way for me and for the other women not only because it gives us a platform but it gives us a chance to network with each other Mm -hmm. and that is huge because that's how we get to go work with each other elsewhere. So the fact that we get to all be in the same place, kind of meet each other um, and watch each other in the ring, uh, that's that's how, you know, we, we get those opportunities um, because there, there are a lot of places that I think either don't want women's wrestling or they've been burned before and they've had bad experiences. Um, so they, you know, they're, they're very, um, kind of hesitant to, to book a women's match. And if the local woman can say, Hey, you know what? I was on a show with this girl and, you know, she, she really works hard. She, you know, this, this, and this, and whatever it is that are those positive qualities. And that gives us a chance to, you know, be able to kind of feel each other out and vouch for each other. And when I can do that, then that gives me opportunities to work. Because Mm -hmm. if I'm somewhere, um, a lot of times I'll have, you know, promoters say, well, we don't have girls here or we don't, you know, know 
what girls are in the area, can you suggest someone? And if I can't come up with someone that I can have a good match with, Mm -hmm. then I may not get to have a match. But when I can say, I've seen this girl in the ring, and I've not only seen her in the ring, but I've seen her in the locker room, and I know how she conducts herself, then I can feel comfortable and confident recommending certain women. And and that's, I think, one of the biggest things things that I get out of this Vicious Outcast wrestling um, situation is that I, I get in contact with all these women that, that I otherwise wouldn't ever have gotten to know. Certainly. I, I definitely don't see um, um, as many uh, women's wrestlers hanging out in the locker room with their boots ready to go just in case somebody you know doesn't make a show, right? Um, it, at least that the, from my perspective, maybe I'm wrong there uh, from shows that you're on. Um, but yeah, it's certainly, it's certainly really good to see that. Um, so uh, from there... You know, I didn't realize um, that you had a tough enough video out. I just, I just came across actually. <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about that? I, did you? Now, uh, as we're recording this, of course, tough enough season just began tonight. I haven't had an opportunity since we've been recording all night. Of course, talked about on Wrestling Mayhem show this week. Um, uh, did you? One, did you get a chance to watch the show, or uh, uh, maybe anything else, or any part of the process that you like to share? Uh, uh, from that, uh, maybe you, how, how was your competition? And if you've seen a lot of the other videos, <laughs> um, I have not seen a lot of the other videos. Uh, I did look up a few online. Mm-hmm. There were, there, there was such a wide variety. There were some that were very compelling and really interesting. And there were some that it, were not, um, you know, and, and good for anybody who, you mm-hmm. know, went for it, but, you know, I mean, I'd be lying if I said that there weren't some that just needed some work, mm-hmm. but we all start somewhere. So um, I have not really seen other than um, clips here and there on um, like people post little clips on Twitter and things. I've seen a little bit of that, um, partly just because I've been following a couple of my friends that were in the top 30. I think both of them were in the top 30. Um but I, I do not have cable or internet, so all of my <laughs> internet um, is on my phone. Um, but I, uh, I mean, I did not necessarily plan on submitting an application. And at the last minute, I thought, you know what, if I don't do this, then, um, you know, I can't, I can't say that I really tried everything. And that, you know, that would be my fault. And, you know, it it still was my fault that I did submit my video at the very last minute because um, at that point, even though I know, you know, had they been totally wowed, I I think, you know, any, anything before the deadline would have been an option. I know that a lot of the interview process and, and follow-ups as far as the production went had already been taking place for a while. So, um, you know, I, that's kind of lesson learned there is that I, I need to just, um, go for it when there's an opportunity and, and usually I do. And and there are a lot of things where I, I do that, but that was one that, um, I hesitated. So, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, not who knows if they would have selected me or not, but, um, I definitely did cut down my chances by doing that. So maybe season, what, where are we up to six? Five, something like that. <laughs> maybe season, maybe season uh, insert number here. So, <laughs> right. I hope it's not another four years or whatever it was between uh, seasons as well. So, um, yeah. But uh, anyways, uh, so so I want to ask a couple. Uh, we have a few questions here. Kind of get to know your questions here uh, on the way out. Uh, you as a wrestler, of course, not any weird personal unless it gets that way. I don't know. Um, but first of all, and this might be a weird one for you to answer because you just uh, you know you don't have cable, you don't have internet. But we like to ask, and we're kind of curious. What are you watching? as far as wrestling whether for your own entertainment for studying for just being part of the business uh what's kind of got your attention right now um oh my goodness um i mean I'm, i definitely uh try to watch you know as much of the kind of ring of honor product that i can i you know, if I, if I hear like, you know, Hey, so-and-so had a really good match on NXT or raw, Mm -hmm. you know, I'll go look those up. Um, right now I've got a stack of DVDs, um, 
that I have been and will be watching. Um, I've got the Ricky Steamboat set. I've got the Nigel McGuinness set. Um, I've got an NWA DVD here. Um, oh, WCW, Chris Jericho. I've got a um, Delirious from nice. Ring of Honor set. So I'm, you know, kind of trying to watch a variety of, um, you know, some really good wrestlers. And um, I also like to try to watch. Um, and part part of this is because my my trainer um, is able to pick out some really good matches because um, I'm training with Les Thatcher. Um, so we were watching, um, a, an old, um, Pat O'Connor match and he'll, you know, he can, he can pick out some really great matches that, that I can learn a lot from. So I've watched, watched some of those, um, we'll find them on YouTube and things. And then, um, I did just recently watch a couple of the DVD sets, um, from the AIW girls night out shows in Cleveland. Cool. Um, I have. The, the the three sets um, from the shows that I performed on. So I, wa- I was actually on the first Girls' Night Out, and I watched that match. And, <laughs> oh, my gosh, I have come a long way. So I, you know, I can pat myself <laughs> on the back. But watching that was just like, wow. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, can't, I mean, I can't even believe that that was, you know, acceptable I guess (laughs) um I mean I you know I was still learning and it was but it's just I guess you don't realize how far you've come until you look back on something like that so just um some of the things that just didn't didn't make sense to me or didn't um I wasn't executing moves as well as Mm -hmm. I do now um I mean it's it's no secret I, I know a lot of people anyone that's either followed me or has, you know, even just now discovered me and and looked up anything from my past can see that I have worked very, very hard on my physique. Um, and I've come a very long way. And and sometimes I, I get frustrated and I don't think that, um, whether it's my physique and fitness or it's my in-ring performance or, you know, my promo abilities, any of that, you know, I, I don't, I don't feel, like I'm getting the results or the progress that I want. But when I can look back on, on something then I can really see like, wow, I'm, I've, I've made some great strides. So, and I'm, and I'm still going, I'm always, you know, like I said, I'm training with less factor three times a week. Um, and I've got a lot of other really great mentors, um, as resources that I either, um, work with or can just, you know, talk with or send, um, matches and promos and things. So um, I'm always, always working on improving. Awesome, awesome. Now this uh, this is kind of a double ended question here. You can take this however you want. We've heard a lot of varieties of answers. Some people get on their soapbox on this one. What is the best and the worst thing about working in indie wrestling uh, so far in your career? Um, one of one answer kind of answers both. Um, I have met some of the best best people in my life through wrestling and I have met the absolute worst people. Um, and everybody I've met through wrestling really are people that I, I never would have crossed paths with had it not been for wrestling. So it definitely brings together just a cross section of all kinds of different people from different backgrounds. And that is really, I think amazing and wonderful. Um, and I've seen it do just amazing things for a lot of people. Um, I have one friend who, um, you know, he has himself said that he was really unhappy and, um, just with his life and his job and everything. And he kind of discovered indie wrestling. And, um, I feel like I, I think he's just really come out of his shell. He's made a lot of friends, um, you know, by, by just coming to shows and and meeting people and getting to kind of, I I mean, maybe be more comfortable in his own skin. I don't know, but, um, you know, that's somebody that I never would have ever come into contact with had it not been for wrestling. Um, so, uh, that, that kind of in a way answers both. Um, 
but the, another amazing thing about wrestling is it's an opportunity for me to really push myself. And like I said, be really competitive with myself. But by doing that, I have been able to um, inspire other people. And that is something that's, that's really important to me. And one of the biggest compliments I ever get is, you know, when somebody says that I inspired them to do something, you know, to do better for themselves and for their lives. Um, so, I mean, there are definitely some really amazing positive things about wrestling. Um, and I, I guess I would just go with the, the negative is that while there are amazing people in wrestling, just like in any part of life, you meet some really awful people too. So you just have mm-hmm. to always be aware and um, surround yourself with those really great people and, um, you know, not let the negative people drag you down because that that's, you know, I, I've seen people get just kind of dragged in and pulled into um, a lot of negativity to the point where, um, you know, some people have allowed it to affect their entire lives. And, and I've seen some people that turned it around and some people that didn't. So, you know, there's, there's definitely... Um, two two extremes i guess mm. and it's such a shame too because it really like in the long run like this is supposed to be a fun thing right and you know i feel like and i think overall it is yeah and i i think that the negativity and the negative people really are the minority mm-hmm. and part of that is because they they can't really survive because the people that are working hard and are positive just they, they get to a point where they, they aren't going to put up with it and they don't allow it. And um, I know myself in particular, there are certain people that I just won't work with them because they just are so negative and bad influence and they treat people badly and I just won't be associated with them. So, you know, if, if enough people who are, you know, really talented and, um, you know, people that I guess are, um, would be a positive asset to a show, I guess, if, if enough of those people, you know, start to, um, you know, kind of make those kinds of decisions and they value themselves more than to be on a show that is, is going to perpetuate that negativity, then those people, Either um, certain people will get removed, or the um, I, the company or the group as a whole isn't really going to get a chance to grow if if not um, if not totally kind of get just dispersed, I guess. Mm-hmm. All right, I got one more question, kind of off the script a little bit, but I did notice you were trained by Jimmy Jimmy Yang. Is that correct? He he was one of my trainers. Okay. Um, is there, was that the question? Or no, 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 no. That's the lead-in. That's the lead-in because I keep hearing about this from our friend Joe Dabrowski every time I go to a wrestling show with him. Uh, but are, are you aware and and have you seen or experienced the uh, Jimmy Wang Yang's redneck party bus that I hear so much about? I I am, and there's also a princess bus. I Okay, okay. <laughs> that was the next question. No. <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> because i this is uh legendary and i'm trying to figure out a way I, actually I, I think there might be an opportunity for me to go to cincinnati and experience this um yeah please i, I don't think we talked about this on the show can you tell us about the party bus <laughs> <laughs> um i mean i haven't partied on the party bus okay. myself <laughs> um but i've seen it and i know that you know i, I mean i know jimmy and he's he's a fun dude so you know if you can be in a camouflage bus with you know <laughs> duct tape letters on the side driven by the korean cowboys and <laughs> you know, that sounds like a party to me right <laughs> as if as if like his wwe career as everybody knows it wasn't crazy enough uh there's this <laughs> right that's amazing this is one of those and i, I mean i think it's awesome because it, mm-hmm. it really is something that um you know he he realized that that was something that there was a need for it and um you know, he's been doing great with it and that you know something that um that fits fits his personality and his lifestyle so mm-hmm. you know he can 
kind of schedule his life the way he wants to. Um, so, I mean, I think it's awesome. And it's, you know, he it, being able to do something that um, has that kind of longevity, you know, is when, when a lot of people kind of maybe take, take a different turn in their career and then they don't know what to do, but I, he's, he's really found a niche and is, is growing. So it's awesome. <laughs> awesome. Thanks a lot. Thank you for indulging me for that one. Mary, Liz, Mary Elizabeth Monroe. She's uh she's all over the place. Uh, we got a couple uh, her matches over at Pittsburgh wrestling.com with vicious outcast wrestling and the renegade wrestling Alliance. Some real good stuff over there. Uh, tell me, where are you on social media? If people want to learn more about you, find out when you're coming up. If you want to plug a couple of shows, uh, of course, AIW wrestling, you're up there as well. Uh, please go check out their DVs, friends of the show uh, and such as well. But, uh, but, but uh, the floor to you, uh, uh, where can people find you out there? Uh, okay. So my, Twitter is at wrestler M E M and that is also my Instagram. And then I have two places you can find me on Facebook, um, because I have, uh, I think reached the maximum friends I can have oh, on my no. name. Oh no, page. you're, you're in that club. <laughs> um, so I've got a lot of friends and followers on there. That one is facebook.com backslash wrestler, Mary Elizabeth. Mm hmm. And then the fan page would be backslash wrestler M E M. So if you can remember wrestler M E M, you'll, you'll be able to find me all over the place. Um, and I try to keep everything kind of up to date. Um, I'm still getting used to having the fan page. So, <laughs> um, but my, my other profile is public. So anybody can follow it and still see, you know, anything that I post. Um, so I, I try to, as I get posters or get dates for shows and everything, um, get that up there. Um, uh, can't think. Okay. So July 7th actually is a really cool show that I'm excited about. Um, you were talking about you know, the, the benefits of, um, kind of what, what VOW is doing for women's wrestling July 7th in a different area. I'll be down in new Albany, Indiana, which is, um, near Louisville, Kentucky, if people are more familiar with that area, uh, for Strictly Insane Pro Wrestling. And um, we do a girl fight show mm -hmm. that is a women's roster. Um, and we're going to have, I'm I'm going to be facing Miss Dyslexia, nice. which I am so excited for. Um, we've got, I think, um, Leva Bates, Mary Dobson, Lufisto, Darcy Dixon, um, Samantha Heights, Heather Owens. Um, I think that might be everybody, but it's, so it's, it's a really, really cool show and a really great locker room. Um, and, you know, another opportunity for all, all of us women to, you know, work together and, you know, keep networking and everything. And then um, for people that are in the Indiana, Illinois kind of area, I will be in Fort Wayne, Indiana, July 25th for Heroes and Legends. Um, actually that weekend is, is going to be a big weekend for me because July 23rd at 1159 PM, I will be, um, working for Juggalo Championship Wrestling at the Gathering in oh, Thornville, Ohio. Nice. And that will be my first gathering. I've worked for <laughs> JCW, um, last, I think December, but this will be my first are, gathering. Are you, so. are you, are you ready to wrestle at about three in the morning? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm going to be like, can I go first? Because then on mm -hmm. the 24th, the following day, I will be um, working for, um, I, I'll be doing a show in Louisville, Kentucky with wow. Ohio Valley Wrestling. And then July 25th, the so Saturday is when I will be in Fort Wayne, Indiana for Heroes and Legends. And they're doing their fan fest and show. So I'm actually going to have to leave Cincinnati at like 7 or 8 a.m., Wow. to get out there um yeah so <laughs> that's gonna be a, a, an exhausting but fun weekend wow yeah uh, and I, then I, i'll I, definitely august um i think august 8th i will be at nwa Smoky, and then august 14th i will be back up at um absolute intense wrestling in cleveland for uh, their Battle of the Sexes show. So that's going to be awesome. Um, it'll be an opportunity, you know, still to work with a, a lot of the other women, but 
um, you know, to get a crack at the men and kind of <laughs> show them what the women have to offer. Yeah, there was a lot of noise coming out of last year's uh, show, I understand. A lot of interesting yes. documentaries and such. So, um, Yeah, so I mean, that's going to be really awesome. I'm, I'm very excited to be a part of that. I, I've been fortunate this year. There are a few things that um, I've, I've been, I've become aware of and seen things and said, oh my gosh, I would love to be a part of that. And then I get contacted and I do get to be a part of it. So that's one of them. Another one was old wrestling, which is also in the oh, Cleveland area nice. um, where I had seen kind of some, some information about the kinds of shows they were putting on. And I thought, oh my gosh, that would be amazing. Mm-hmm. I want to be a part of it. And then I got contacted and, and I was able to work for them recently so, I, believe you, yeah. I believe you got to be uh, the bearded lady on that show as well. So I <laughs> was. Um, okay, I, I missed the question because I was going to ask if you're going to grow a creepy mustache like Gregory Iron and Zach Gowan did for the show. Uh, but uh, there you go. I guess so. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, I like to be different, so no mustache. <laughs> awesome. That's, that's what makes me different. Is, that's what makes a, no mustache. That makes that's what makes it creep uh, less creepy than what the, what how how they were looking on that one. I was just like. Right. Yeah. It was like, I, I mean, I, for one, was pretty impressed with how good I looked with the beard. I I mean, I thought I kind of, I thought I pulled it off. I was like, actually, that's kind of, all right. Amazing. Doesn't look bad. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for uh, 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 sticking around with us on the Indie Mayhem show tonight, Mary. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again uh, uh, in the area somewhere. Hope you survive the gathering. Well, yeah, I mean, I'll <laughs> definitely be back because I'm not going right. to pull that the shenanigans like last year where, you mm-hmm. know, somebody won the won the crown and then never came back to cash it in. I'm going to come back. I'm going to cash it in and I'm going to win the title. That's right. So, I, you know, so you'll keep, get your chance to see me, I guarantee. Keep an eye out on uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling on uh, the social medias and vicious, uh, viciousoutcastwrestling.com. Find out when she's coming back or will it be a surprise? Yeah. Will, will you with Seth Rollins this oh, thing? I don't know. Mm, you never know. She could pop I'm, up I'm any coming, show. I'm coming for that belt. You're just so gonna I don't have care who's wearing it. I'm coming. There you for go. It. You're just gonna have to go to all of their shows if you're in the area or travel. Get your butt in the car. Exactly. And just in case, I could just turn up anytime. That's right. That's right. And uh, and don't leave early. Don't leave the shows early either. Because you <laughs> never know. Who leaves early? You paid the money. Go go see all the wrestling show. Anyways. I know. Get get there early and stay late and don't miss anything. Beating traffic is not an excuse for an indie wrestling show. <laughs> <laughs> no, and and you know what? They have bathrooms. They have hot dogs. There's really no reason you ever have they to. They got leave. arcade games. They have everything they got, you need. Exactly. Exactly. She could. Get, she could. <laughs> she could behind behind a Terminator machine. You don't know. You have no idea. I know. You know what? <laughs> People should just start bringing their sleeping bags to the shows. I. I mean, make it happen. Make it happen. Don't miss a second. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Now, Eamon, we're going to talk about uh, strangely some more indie wrestling. That's right, Sork. Uh, it's time to uh, go into some of the stuff that happened in indie wrestling this week, uh, particularly for some of us, including for more particularly me. I don't know why I got on that tangent. Uh, Inspired by Wrestling happened this past weekend. I kind of want to mention some of that because uh, I know it sparked some discussion uh, mm-hmm. with the Mayhem Show mm-hmm. guys. For Explain again. So Clash of the Bash, it's kind of – you guys have fun. This, this is our show where we kind of go all out as far yes. as like ridiculousness. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's a summer show, so it's definitely our, our last time we did Clash of the Bass, it was very much beach themed. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, there were beach balls, which we we kind of gave to the crowd almost like streamers, which probably wasn't a great idea. <laughs> uh, but it was so fun, anyways. Well, we're we're uh, you experiment, that's fine. That's true. That was the birth of the uh, the Captain Tad as well, which with the greatest was, picture, which has been down. your profile picture for the last year, and it's amazing. It, it's so it you. Is, it is a great photo. The, the the point when new when new wrestlers come into Inspire Pro, and then they, I introduce myself to them, and, and they say, "Oh, the guy in the Captain's hat." Like that's <laughs> kind of scary. I don't know if I like that, but uh, no. Uh, this one we were a bit, we took a bit more of a uh, a uh, I guess um, uh, a Greek. Toga ish. We, we we called it a uh, wrestling's biggest toga party. Risque. Uh, <laughs> Wait risque. a minute. Wait a minute. So you put yourselves in direct competition with WrestleMania nine? We did. <laughs> uh, at least at least I, I would say of the last decade, the greatest wrestling <laughs> toga party. Okay. Um, okay, that's fair. I, I'll go with that then. Uh, no, it was fun. Uh, uh, thank you to everyone that 
uh, the, and not everyone did because it's very hard to encourage people and say, "Hey, come in a toga." Uh, uh, I we had to be like, we very much had to be like, you can just pretty much wear a sheet over it and call it a toga, and you'll be okay. Um, but no, I went all out for the most part. Uh, uh, going as, as I don't know if Sorg bring up the picture, but uh, uh, oh, I, I was waiting for it tactfully. Okay, yeah, tactfully. Uh, I I went all out. Uh, there it and, is. There uh, it is. Look at that. If you're on video, this is why you need to be on video. Wait, this is why you need to be at Inspire Pro Wrestling because you get the chance to see my shoulder blades and and uh, unexposed arms. Apparently, you've been working out uh, in the last year. Look at that. I it was a I need to learn how to tie a toga. Actually, no, I someone else tied my toga and they did a better job than I would have ever done. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that was uh, the most interesting thing uh, because it's pretty much like like it's like those you know that old saying about like how you imagine you're like you dream about you know you're giving a speech in front of you know hundreds of people or whatever and you're actually naked. Mm-hmm. Like that was the feeling kind of, but in real life. Uh, no, no, note to everyone watching this. I was wearing something underneath on on my lower end, but uh, yeah, uh, end. <laughs> so worried about having like the like the like falling out. I guess is the best way to put falling it. Falling out. <laughs> uh, there's, yeah, maybe we should have that discussion about double sided tape with Mary on earlier, huh? Yeah, it's a very <laughs> loose sheet, uh, um, <laughs> so you know falling things can out. happen. Uh, but no, it was fun. Uh, it, it, like I said, it's something that we get to try, uh, you know, and, and be a little bit different. It was much harder when I was commentating with friend of the show Keith Lee, and he came out in a full like suit, like like completely dressed out. Like if you've never seen Keith Lee before, it's just like full of swagger, like just like the coolest fucking dude you'll ever find. And I'm wearing like a bed sheet. <laughs> It, it was the weirdest uh, contrast, but no, it was a really fun show. Uh, uh, all that aside, there was some really great wrestling on that show. Um, really, really fun stuff happened. Uh, it, we had a great crowd as well. Uh, uh, I mean, we co- kind of competed with Father's Day, which I know is kind of a, a big thing. But I know some people brought their dads to uh, the show, which I think is really good. That's cool. Um, uh, yeah, it, it was a fun show uh, as always. Uh, uh, Inspire Pro uh, Sundays are always really fun. Um, and yeah, there was a lot of great stuff. Uh, the next event that we are having is August 9th, uh, and that'll be our Fade to Black event. Uh, that mm-hmm. should be a feel- really fun one. We already know that Andy Dalton will be defending the Inspire Pro Championship against Absolute Ricky Starks, and that's sure to be uh, a spectacular one. So there's some uh, good stuff coming down the pipeline uh, for Inspire Pro Wrestling, so be sure to check us out. Awesome, awesome. Uh- I have nothing else to talk. I just wanted to hit, talk about this. There's the nothing to say. I, I mean, mean it, 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 be... like you got this, and there's just nothing more to say to this. Uh, apparently, some good wrestling happened as well, right? Some uh, all, all good wrestling happened in any wrestling world. There was a you know, Ring of Honor did stuff. I know you guys kind of talked about it on the main show. Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, we did. We had a pretty extensive kind of look at uh, Ring of Honor. They're, yeah, they're growing into the mainstream for us, I think, for the most part here. It but is, I mean, but yeah. it is so interesting to see, like, the uh, okay, we talked about kind of the fake friends of the show that were mentioned on the show. You have to check out Gold for that. But um, um, but but it was still, you know, apparently Ray Road, Dalton Castle, a bunch of other guys making some really good headway on there as well. Um, but generally, uh, you know, a lot of stuff coming up. A lot of a lot of I don't know. July's weird for me on this end, at least. But um, there, uh, definitely a lot going on around there. I don't know. I don't have Definitely. much else for you. <laughs> yeah. No, no, hey, you know, no, Ugly, did you know, um, let me tell you about a discovery and I need to look more into this and see what it takes to get our stuff maybe on this. There is an independent wrestling network on Roku. Is there really? Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's nobody big, but oddly some area people like, uh, PWX is in the area. Um, that's actually who I heard about it from was supposed to PWX black diamond wrestling, who we've talked about, um, for a while. Actually, we talked about a bit here. They, they're doing a lot of interesting media, getting stuff out there. Um, and I watched a few different things from a few different promotions. And, uh, I, I will say there seems to be sometimes issues where maybe the probably, because I mean, just people are doing this and, and, and as you'll, oh, that reminds me. There's a thing I forgot to do today. Um, there, there's certain formats. I forgot a couple of things today. Uh, there's, there's certain formats 
you know, that work best for streaming and everything like that. It looked like, like maybe they weren't set correctly for whatever reason. But generally, I mean, it's mm-hmm. an interesting way to do that. And you got to think if somebody's looking up WWE, WWE Network, maybe they'll find your wrestling channel as well. And uh, I didn't, I installed a few of them, but I, I didn't get a chance to look at them. There's actually a couple of, I don't know if they're wrestling feds, whatever there were, but they're, I installed like three or four wrestling channels that look like indie kind of wrestling kind of situations. So, um, um, so if you have a Roku, give a shot at that. If you have something else, may, I, I'm probably take a look at like my Amazon Prime Stick or, or, or something like that, see if there might be some stuff on there as well. So uh, another source for indie wrestling, especially if you have a Roku device. And I have the Roku, like the original Roku that doesn't even get WWE Network because it's too new basically um and and it worked on there so so pretty wide on that if you have one of those lying around dust it off and watch some indie wrestling on your tv so i don't know that was a cool discovery for me this week awesome I guess on that note, uh, again, thank you very much, Mary Elizabeth Monroe, for coming on here. Uh, great interview. Had a lot of fun. Uh, I got to tell you, if you're a Patreon supporter of the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we have something very special for you uh, going on there. Um, what did we call it? The uh, Name Drop Special? Uh, yeah, it's our uh, Name Drop Special, Name Drop Spectacular, whatever you want to call it. Basically, <laughs> me and Sorg just going off it, it's, people. It, we, we've had a lot of, well, not going off. Not going off on people. There's no dirt in no, there no, 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 necessarily. I, yeah, but we've had a lot of weird experiences with people in indie wrestling, and I don't feel comfortable talking about it on here, kind of more publicly, um, because it just seems like those. I just they're just weird stories, you know. Um, like, yeah, I had this experience with this person, or you're like, uh, you know, getting Chipotle with so and so. That would be an interesting story just by <laughs> itself, or as everybody will find you out. Know, you- Hmm? I was gonna say, you want to know who I hate Chipotle with? That means you gotta subscribe to. Patreon. There you go, there you go. Or as everybody will find out in about a month, the results of me being at Virgil's house. There you go. Um, I gotta start editing that. Oh, I got so much to do that I forgot. Oh no. Anyways, hi. You out there watching? Sorry, I didn't get you that thing today. You know who you are. Uh, anyways. Uh, Damn it. So, and the, uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Support indie wrestling. Support podcasts. Support independent podcasts. Support indie podcasts about wrestling. Sure. Uh, support wrestling. There you go. Just support, so support all the things you love. Don't steal. There's somebody talking about like stealing TV and movies like in the middle of the coffee shop blatantly. And I was just so sad. I was so very sad. I'm like, you have no shame. But anyways, on that note, uh, uh, <laughs> please uh, subscribe to us on uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show, um, um, all the audio and video feeds on the social medias. You know where it's at. You enjoy us here live and whatever mental state I might be after uh, five hours of podcasting already at uh, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com about 11 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show if you want to support the show there. A little bit helps. And, uh, and, and, and that's it. Amen. Inspire Pro Wrestling. Go check that out, too. Check out our friends. Have shows coming up with RWALive.com, IWCWrestling.com, ViciousOutcastWrestling.com, and uh, so many other things coming down the line. I can't wait. Can't wait. So much good stuff in wrestling and outside. I can't wait to tell all you guys about. So, with that, Eamon, at Eamon 2, please, at Sorgatron. Support indie wrestling. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. for the taste of the poor. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com.